Please welcome Ant Middleton! <laughs> For coming on the show. You're welcome. You're welcome. What, what a decade it's been for you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's madness. It's um, well, ten one minute. years ago, you were fighting in Afghanistan, mm. and now you're interviewing somebody that used to be in One Direction. Yeah, he's lucky, right? <laughs> <laughs> Take us through that year. Yes, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. Like ten years ago, I was living in the shadows, and now I'm sort of living in the limelight. Right. Um, but just passing on my experience, really, and my my sort of mindset, especially to the younger generation, and Liam Payne. He's only 26. He's lived like a, several lifetimes already. So let, let's talk about the TV show. It's primarily, primarily a uh, chat show. Right. So it's an interview, but yeah. whilst on the move. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, it's three days long. Yeah. So, so it's there's a nowhere. Three day long chat show. Yes, it is. Wow. Yes. So there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. It's not like I've got someone for an hour and they can, you know, put their, put their front up and tell me what they, what, what, what I want to hear. Yes. It's like, you know, I'll get them during an an adrenaline fueled exercise or a task and then ask some questions. Um, what did you learn from Liam? It was re really interesting because he was very, very open. Yeah. Liam, uh, for a young lad, I thought he was going to be quite closed again, you know, because of his relationships. Um, and I thought he was just going to give me some media answers. There's not much that he didn't, you know, once I pushed a few buttons. What are the buttons? Much, uh, um, just about his relationships, you know, he, um, obviously <laughs> older women as well. Um, not mentioning any names. Um, <laughs> you know, you know. Um, and also... So um, were you doing that if you saw, like, you know, sort of uh, tribeswomen, who were, like, elders, were you like, hmm, you into that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd look around, he'd be gone. I'd be like, where is yeah. he? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have seen... So, uh, 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 no, <laughs> a heart shaking like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just, like, it's a heart shaking. Uh, yeah. You don't know young <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> who would you love to take next? If you could take anyone anywhere in the world, where would you go? Who would? You know, I'd love to put through his paces, his Piers Morgan. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if he'd come back. Like, where's Piers? <laughs> <laughs> what, um... <laughs> what would you, um... What would you do? What wouldn't I do? Yeah. Car. Well, take us through the uh, the activities you'd have for Piers. <laughs> I'd just I'd strip him naked, burn his clothes, and just push him off into the wild and drive off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever feel like that it, it feels like there's a real resurgence of um, guy, sort of guys taking celebrities into the woods? Mm. Um, that feels like that's <laughs> that's what's happening. What happens in the woods stays in the woods. But do you ever feel like you're in a battle, you and Bear Grylls? Me and Bear? Um, no, I'm the real deal, obviously. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bear's a great friend of mine. Um, so when you two meet, are you kind of sort of chatting about, yeah, where you been? Oh, I just got back from uh, Africa, yeah. Mm. How much of your own piss do you drink? Oh, you know. <laughs> Have you ever drunk your own piss? Have you? Yes. <laughs> but not in a survival situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tell me more. Tell me. <laughs> it's a Royal Marine thing. Well, you can't end it there. <laughs> it's a Royal Marine thing. Go on. There's a thing where you're in the bar and it's the whole, uh, the whole military sort of lad culture where yeah. you... You piss in the boot and you pass it piss around. Piss in the boot? Yeah, and you have to... Oh, oh. <laughs> but, but normally, it's a legend's boot, right? It's someone that's been in the, in, in the, in the service for a while. They're, they've either passed selection for the SAS or the SBS, so, you know, it's a real proud moment. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, 17, you're like, ah... <laughs> 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 what do I have to do this? Shut up, boy, drink the piss. <laughs> well, I can see why you miss it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jazz. Yeah. What was it like? I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, right? because you were front line in, in Afghanistan. What, what is that like? Do you know what? You just trained at what you do. It's not until you leave, not until I left the special forces, that I realised, wow, what I used to do wasn't normal. Yeah. But when you're engulfed in it, and that's, that's what you love doing, it's just a job. 
But do you not have moments where you sort of think about it and go, God, I, I nearly didn't make it? Yeah, there are moments where, um, you know, a lot of moments where we came back off operations and, you know, our, that your pal to your left or to your right would be injured or wouldn't make it back or the helicopter nearly got shot down. Yeah. But you, you expect that. You go into combat knowing that that is a possibility. So you sort of laugh it off. So, really? um, yeah, and just move on. What's next? What's next? And it's all, it's all about the mission at the end of the day. Because I read a fascinating thing that when you were doing tours, you wouldn't uh, contact your loved ones. Yeah, when I was uh, in Afghanistan, I wouldn't contact my wife or children. I didn't want to know that there was a problem at home. And the reason why I'd done that is because I didn't want any, dist any distractions to come into yeah, yeah. To my performance because, you know, that 1% distraction that I had with my, my wife telling me that my, my son had been a little shit or, yeah. or, um, <laughs> or, or the dishwasher, pad, whatever it may be, you know, that 1% distraction could cost someone their lives. I can't imagine, I'm, I'm a wimp, but I can't imagine what it's like being in a war zone and sort of depending on your friends and that. Mm. Are there ever light moments? Yeah, some would call it bullying. Um, <laughs> uh, we call it, you know, strength of character. Yeah. Um, How uh, often have you been strength of character? <laughs> What's... Well, I've woken up before with um, my face and my head completely uh, covered in veet. And I was just like, eyelashes, eyebrows, <laughs> hair. And I just looked... <laughs> I was completely bald. <laughs> Oh, dear. I mean, I'm with them. That is funny. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen it. You should have seen it. I couldn't help but laugh. I looked yeah. in the mirror and I, 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 well, I'm you... going to cry or laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just ended up laughing. And but... you couldn't look surprised because you had no eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. The... But what... <laughs> when would, they... would, you call that, would, you call, would you call that bullying? It's funny, isn't it? No, because it's funny, isn't it? It's clearly bullying. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's really funny. It is funny. <laughs> Weirdly, me and my brother did that when we were eight. We shaved our eyebrows off mm. um, before my cousin's wedding. And just <laughs> like, Jimmy, but we were like eight, and we're like, whoosh, whoosh, and then we sort of looked at each other, we're like, oh, oh, okay. And we, so we got like a marker pen and kind of <laughs> drew them on. Like that. So we literally were at her wedding. Like most people in the crowd here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we started it, yeah. <laughs> I read an amazing, I was so envious when I read this, that when you'd been on a, on a tour of duty, you'd get home and there would be 500 pounds that your wife had drawn out that would be on the kitchen table mm. and you were given two days to go wild. That's correct, yeah. After a comedy tour, if my wife were to sort of say, there you go, you got two days, there's 500, I'd be like, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking to them, what did you do in those two days? Decompression. Um, I just went out with the lads. Um, you get it off your chest, you know, my wife knew that. Um, we need to just talk, talk about what's happened. Yeah. Sort of vent, let everything out. Just got extremely drunk. <laughs> um, after that, I had no excuses. I do you, do you, good. does your wife work? Uh, she used to, yeah, but now we've got four children, so... So she's she, she, she works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But does she have, like, a... Does she ever have, like, a two-day special where you say, you go away? <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Touché, touché. <laughs> um, no, she doesn't, bless her. Maybe I should give her two days, what do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. Um... But as if they're going to say, no! <laughs> But you wrote a book called The Fear Bubble. Yeah. Which, for me, is a far after you've had a curry. <laughs> but... <laughs> do you know what's that? Um, I'm, no, I'm, good. Through. I'm good, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but that was kind of... A, it was sort of like um, being a modern man, I would say. Well, I'm very emotionally connected, you right. know, um, hence, you know, The Fear Bubble, my, my book, First Man In. I talk about emotional intelligence and, you know, it's ultimately acknowledging your emotions for what they are and making them work for you. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's only through going into combat and having to harness fear and use it to my advantage, because if not, it will destroy you, mm. especially at that level where you're going to live or you're going to die. Do you ever miss so, that? Yeah, I do. People say I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie. It's not. It's, um, it's actually really, really euphoric. When you uh, teeter on that edge of life and death, life is so uncomplicated. Everything's stripped away from it. And when you, when you are in that situation, it's, the, it's like ultimate peace. Right. You know, it's like, it's ultimate euphoria. It's the complete opposite to what people think. Yeah. You know, it's because you teeter on that edge. And that's why with Everest, you know, I went out and, and, and climbed during the storms. When you walk that line of life and death, it's the purest form of life. So you're chasing life 
by nearly dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Yeah. The wife's not too happy about it. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, how did you sort of evolve into this kind of ripped Buddha? Mm -hmm. um... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, do you, like, but do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But, but I'm curious, was, was there a kind of moment in your life that you went from kind of like all drinking kind of yeah. army guy? Yeah. To a thoughtful person. Um, the main thing that really hit me was when I left and six months after I left, I found myself in prison. Right. Um, due to a violent offence that, that took place. Um, and I'm standing in, at my prison uh, door. Next to me, I've got someone that's robbed a granny and next to me, someone that's got no teeth in their head. You know, and I'm just like, well, I'm no different to, to all of these people. Um, and it was a moment that I had to really, really reflect. It wasn't any hardship, it was just shameful. Is that Such really? a shameful experience that I thought to myself, wow, I'm not out, I'm spending time away from the family, I'm not providing um, anything to them, if anything, I'm a burden. But that's the best thing that ever happened to me, yeah. was going to prison, to be, to be fair. And did you work that through with yourself? Yeah. It must be, I'm sort of, Viewing it through the prism of your wife, mm. what a roller coaster it's been for yeah. her as well. Without that woman in my life, yeah. I certainly wouldn't be where I am today. She gave me the focus to not worry about anything else but my job. Right. You now she 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 actually understood that. Yeah. And that's why I excel at what I do. Because even to this day now, you know, when I'm away filming or what, whatever I do, she just takes that burden of, of responsibility. And also, um, you know, it's that one common denominator with my wife is that no matter how successful I was or how unsuccessful I was, she'd always be there. Yeah, I think what you should do, you know when you're doing one of your shows and we see you in these extreme situations, there should be a thing where you can press the red button and we see your wife just having a really nice holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that you're just kind of like surfing on a train and she's just left there going. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely wonderful. Please thank my guest, the wonderful Anne Middleton. Thank you very much.